we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is Ari. I work with Vitalink OC, and we recently partnered with MSJC, Mount San Jacinto College. So we're excited to get started. Um, if we can start with introductions, and we'll start with Alan, if you can give us your name, title, specific courses, and the campus where you teach. Sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited. I see some familiar names out there in the audience. Uh, my name is Alan Marsala. I'm the department chair for the creative media department. Um, I also oversee the digital media program within that department. Um, so I teach a lot of the video production, motion graphic courses, but primarily the course I'll be talking about today is the introduction course. Um, we are primarily at the Menifee campus, although um, some of our programs do offer courses at the San Jacinto campus. Thank you, Alan. And Keith? My name is Keith Hans. I'm the digital photography lead in creative media. Um, I started uh, digital photography here at MSJC in 1998, and we became fully digital in 2004. Uh, in 2006, uh, we designed a state-of-the-art facility and a studio uh, that is uh, uh, really quite accomplished and well-equipped. Um, my um, education includes a, a BFA and an MFA, that's a Bachelor's of Fine Arts and a Master's of Fine Arts from the University of Illinois uh, in uh, studio arts and uh, photography. And I also have a master's degree in educational technology. I teach uh, all levels of uh, digital photography uh, and uh, primarily on the Menifee campus. Thank you, Keith. And Ms. LaTanya. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Ms. LaTanya Washington, and I instruct social media marketing, um, advanced social media marketing, and this, this um, spring semester, summer semester, spring semester, I will be teaching brand development, and I am super duper excited about social media marketing. I live and breathe it. This is how I run my businesses. We are so excited that you are, are all are here. We're looking forward to answering all the questions that you all have. And um, welcome to Creative Media. This is number one here at MSJC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Latanya. And um, our final panelist is Mr. Bob. If you can introduce yourself, with your name, title, courses you teach, and if there's a specific campus where you teach. Hey everyone, sorry I'm running, it was a little late today, but um, thank you for having me, super excited. Uh, my name is Bob Bozanellos. I am a um, instructor of audio technology at the Menifee campus. I am a certified uh, Pro Tools instructor where I teach Pro Tools 101 and Pro Tools 110. I have also taught other courses in the, the realm of audio, at the college. I also have experience teaching uh, music as well. I'm sitting in my uh, lovely studio, as you can see here, and in my facility, and I, I do a lot of interrelated audio and um, music um, educational practices outside of the school as well. So um, yeah, thank you so much, and I'm super excited about uh, to be part of this. Perfect. Thank you all so much. Um, we're going to go ahead and dive right into the questions. And again, for any students and educators, if you have any additional questions, feel free to enter them into the chat. Uh, they will come directly to me, and I'll do my best to add them into the discussion. Um, so if we can start with Keith on the next question, um, can you give us a brief background about your own educational path? Um, so did you know that you were going to go right into creative media? Is that what you majored in? Or did you kind of test the waters at first? You're muted also. <laughs> it's okay. I discovered my creativity in high school and uh, my parents had a different plan for me. I was accepted to the University of Illinois in uh, a pre-med um, discipline and uh, got out of that uh, in my first uh, calculus class. And so I changed my major and uh, never looked back. Um, I um, earned uh, the BFA and then directly after that they take one, their, what they call uh, their outstanding student, what some might call a valedictorian in the art discipline in their master's program 
and I was that student. And so I completed my MFA at the University of Illinois as well uh, in painting and photography. And so um, I uh, really knew where I needed to be, but um, I hadn't yet convinced my um, parents of that um, and really uh, took my own path when uh, I realized that I was uh, facilitating my own education entirely and uh, working on scholarships. And um, so I, uh, I went my own path. And so never really looked back. Uh, I went from high school directly into uh, the bachelor's program and then directly into the master's pr program. Why, all the time while I was operating a, a business uh, in Champaign-Urbana uh, uh, in the campus uh, town where I renovated Victorian homes. And so that's uh, one of the ways that I um, facilitated and paid for my uh, education. And uh, I worked in the industry as a traveling assignment photographer and portrait photographer for uh, many years, uh, in fact, two decades. And um, uh, I um, came to California to bring my cameras into the sky in free flight. And um, I had a, a very serious accident that uh, uh, out of uh, recovery brought me um, into teaching. And then I became uh, a full-time uh, instructor here at MSJC. Perfect, thank you, Keith. And Alan, can you tell us about your educational path and what you majored in? Yeah, sure. So I am a Menifee kid through and through. My parents moved here when I was one. I graduated from the local high school. I was the first graduating class from Bell Mountain Middle School down the road from here. So. Growing up, there wasn't really a local industry that I could be a part of. Making videos was always a hobby for me, but never a practical career choice, which many of our students experience the same type of uh, lack of support level, especially from parents, um, of viewing the creative careers as a tangible career. So like most high school students around junior year, I caught the four year bug, thought that going to university was what I had to do. Uh, my dad's a mathematician, my brother's a mechanical engineer, and so I thought I had to follow suit. So I uh, got accepted to UC San Diego um, as a mechanical engineering major. So two years into this UC um, tuition and e exploration, I finished all my undergrad math, all my undergrad physics, all my undergrad engineering courses, and said, I hate this. Um, I don't care what they promised me in terms of salary at the end of all this, I hate it. Um, it also didn't help that I was on academic probation because I had failed too many classes. Um, so I really had hit quite a roadblock in doing what I thought I had to do, but I did not like it. Um, so I took a gamble and I changed my major halfway through my UC career into uh, visual arts with an emphasis in digital cinema. And I finished their four year program in two years because I refused to pay for more UC tuition than I had to. Um, upon graduating from UCSD, I ended up finding a job in Texas um, that started me off in the broadcast television um, world. And I have never held a job outside of the industry since. Um, so I've worked for um, nonprofits. I've worked for large motorsports companies making TV commercials. Um, and so I got my master's online two, three years ago um, through National University in film studies. And now I get to teach what I love to do in the industry and hopefully inspire students to do the same. That's awesome. I've definitely been there where you start somewhere and you're like, that's just not it. <laughs> uh, if I can ask Ms. Latani as well, please share your educational path with us. I know, Alan, that happens often because I started out in nursing, you all. And um, I just found out even as a young girl, I had a, I had a compassion for people and I always wanted to see people succeed. So I found myself walking around with a stethoscope around my neck or thermometer. I mean, I was ready. Um, and so I graduated from Youngstown State University with a nursing degree and then moved here and, and that is in the great state of Ohio, the Ohio, and um, found out in, in 1989, moved here to California, and I found myself veering more towards business and business ownership. And so as the years went on, I found myself going to UCLA extension program, certification program, and um, I was certified in public relations and um, started out in business, began to open up my own businesses, and then came on to 
here at MSJC and um, got an associate degree in business administration. And so here I am, an alumni of MSJC Yes Go Eagles. And so it is just something that I love to do. And um, as years went on, I began to realize that social media and social media marketing was a major part of my business. And it was how my business began to grow and to scale from referrals and from people seeing me by being more and more visible on the platform. And that is a reason why it is that I love what I do. And I'm very, very passionate when it comes to social media marketing. That is awesome. Nice to see another MSJC alum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and if we can hear from Bob as well about your educational path. Yeah, wow, this is uh, wonderful. And everybody can hear me okay? Just just double checking. Yeah, so so I'd like to preface it with really, you know, I was a, you know, a skater, guitar playing kid growing up. And my love of music is the core of why I'm sitting here today. And like so many of our students that come to MSJC, they, they, they bring this creative spirit and often it's in the performative arts as well. But that always trickles into the creative digital arts. So for me, I went to school, I went to, uh, you know, I grew up in Riverside, I went to North High School. I also went to MSJC uh, Friends back in the day. Uh, I went to Cal State San Bernardino where I got my degree in uh, music. And then I got a full scholarship to go to UC Irvine to do my master's degree. And it was there in the early 2000s that UCI was putting together an integrated uh, <clears throat> media program. And I realized at that very point, that I, as a performing musician who's getting an MFA, needed to learn technology, and that was around 2002. And I, and I, you know, I still have like my my first Pro Tools equipment in the back, and I really got in deep with understanding technology and seeing technology as being a necessary skill set, right? So um, I graduated from UC Irvine, you know, it's 2005. And actually, I started working for MSJC while I was finishing my MFA in 2005. So I've actually been at MSJC for quite a while. So I'm not going to do the math. Alan can do it. He's got the uh, degrees in the physics and stuff. So, but, um, you know, I, I failed started that, Bob. Just... I failed that. <laughs> no, you didn't. Okay. No, you didn't. I don't need to know this. <laughs> so I, I just, I, music, music is the, my, my catalyst for being a digital creative. And this is very important that, you know, we embody this because so many of our students come in with that initial, like, I really want to, I want to be creative and we shepherd that creativity, right? So I taught music for, for many years at, at MSJC. And then I crossed over into a CTE career technical education where I started teaching all of, of you know, pro tools, audio technology and in between all that, I always owned my own studio. So I had a beautiful facility in Old Town Temecula for many, many years where I taught music, technology, I did recording. I worked with every charter school you can name of, you know, in, in the Valley. So I was, I did very, very, very well. And then I decided to actually sell it. It became Temecula Sounds. And then I built a studio here in my own home where I still in fact, I was doing commercial work last night for, you know, there's a, a sport called pickleball and it's a big movement and I'm doing advertisements and commercials. Uh, last week, just so you, kind of putting it all together, I was part of a team at UC Riverside. I'm actually finishing a PhD there at UC Riverside and I'm on a full fellowship, but I'm on a team right now called the Excite Team at UCR. That's a multimedia team Last week, we live broadcasted globally a dance performance using new technology called Hop In, live broadcasted it. And again, it kind of showcases the fact that digital technology, creative digital technology is a necessity, right? And it's something that I'm, I'm happy that we're all here talking about. So I went from, of course, being really, you know, this you know, musician, skater kid to being a technologist and now kind of seeing how technology and education are finding themselves with this intersectionality, yeah. right? We're seeing that it's starting to cross over and this crossover is where we bridge. And the necessity, the necessity for us 
is, is very important. So yeah, so I'm still in school. I'm you know, one year away from a, a PhD, you know, and my thesis looks at a lot of different components, but right now, um, and Alan knows, uh, you know, we just got a lot of great equipment through the SWP uh, yes. program. Uh, we got all this gear for our, our mobile career uh, center or the bus. So going out to the communities a must, you know, spreading the word of what MSJC does, getting our creatives on that bus and getting everybody out there. So um, yes. yeah, that's long story. I, there's always more, but you know. <laughs> it's no worries, Bob. There. I totally understand the passion. Yeah, for awesome. sure. <laughs> um, so Thanks. I'm, no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm going to kind of combine the next two questions here and I'll open it up for each of you for whoever wants to um, answer first. So I know that for MSJC, there are some courses that offer um, or are available with dual enrollment. Um, but for those students, whether they're high school or college students entering your courses, what do each of you expect um, skill wise or, you know, the willingness from the students? What do you expect from them? in your classrooms? I can kick that one off, Ari. Um, so we articulate with the local high schools, we articulate DIG 110, Intro to Digital Media. We articulate DIG 190, which is video design or video production one. Um, prior, yeah, Jenny is uh, from the Temecula district and they're an awesome partner. Um, we require no prior knowledge prior to those courses. Um, a lot of students come and they, they have this kind of sense of panic. Because they're like, well, I've never done anything with a camera. I've never done any editing. I've never opened Photoshop before. To which I say, great, you're in the right place. Um, because we start from the ground level and work our way up. To which some students say, well, I already know how to do some of this. Great. You're going to learn some brand new tips and tricks. Because I guarantee you, these softwares that we use, they're an infinite well of different ways to do things. And uh, as you can see, we all do this in the industry. And so what's fun about our program, our department, is that we're a group of people who not only love this and love teaching it, but we still do it. Um, I think that's very important. So we do articulate, um, and we articulate very successfully, but we, we expect no prior knowledge um, because you have everything you need to succeed, which is a very trite statement, but it's true in this case, um, to succeed in these courses with what we give you. So for me, it would be most definitely going through um, Ditch 110 with Alan because um, when we go and get into social media marketing, I definitely want students to be able to know how to create video, um, just little things that you will want to know because social media marketing is all about content. And what is content? It is the image, it's the video, um, podcasting, things like that. And so once you get through those courses with Alan and the other instructors who teach this, then I get to have my hands on you and we begin to dig into what social media is and different platforms because it is consistently evolving Everything is techie. And so once we deal with that aspect of it all, then we just go out and begin to create, of course, marketing plans and marketing campaigns and truly, truly understanding what it is all about. And so going through um, the intro to Ditch is the first thing that we do require uh, before going into social media marketing. Yeah. Okay, and then we also did get a, um, got a question in the chat. Um, so I'll kind of open the question to the floor. Um, so for a high school student who wants to go to college um, to get a degree um, kind of surrounding film, what classes do you suggest they take if they can in high school or what should they kind of focus on when they get to college, hopefully MSJC? Yeah, so we do have our associate's degree for transfer in film media and electronic television, film, television, electronic media, one of those. Um, it is an associate's degree for transfer, and it actually comes with the audio technology program, which is just kind of a weird way that it was structured, but that's where it's housed currently. Um, in high school, if you want to focus on that, and you want to start off well, focus on storytelling. Um, there is such a hype on technology and students are like what camera do I need what gear do I need what and it's like just use what you have 
right? Use what you have and go make a great story. Um, nine times out of 10, or dare I say 10 times out of 10, but there's always that one. Um, the, the student that knows storytelling and that's practiced it just by making random things, um, they do way better than the students who are so focused on the gear. Um, and so high school students, if your high school teacher is focusing on gear and not storytelling, ask them, can we do a storytelling exercise? Can we use the technology that we have instead of these awesome cameras to go and just make a story? Um, and I don't know, I, Bob, Keith, Latanya, I don't know if you guys all back me up on that, but that's, that's where I stand for, for the video end of things. If that's what you're interested in, practice your storytelling. Yeah, if I could, Alan, yes. Yes, yes, yes to all of the above because, you know, the, the idea of being able to co-create is something that's been, you know, big in regards to my learning outcomes and objectives. It's about coming together and creating. And, you know, there's a uniqueness that the pandemic has uh, given us, which is the ability to have, you know, the ability to go back to a video and say, well, let's you watch this. But when we get into class, let's create, let's create stories. And I have found myself just overjoyed with when I get to class this semester, we create together. And it's not about, it's not about the gear because we could look at the gear and read the manual, but it's really about, you know, like Alan said, to paraphrase, telling a story, we do it in audio through sound. In fact, we have a project coming up in class. We're going to take, you know, silent films. And we're going to ask ourselves questions, what should that sound like, right? And that, that helps to build a narrative, right? And I think we're, this is the point we're getting to. And this is where technology bridges the gap again. And it's cross-disciplinary where we could tell stories digitally for not just making video and audio, but how does that implement to your history class, to your English class, to all sorts of ways in which students can use tech to, to help other people um, you know, bring their, their creative ideas uh, to fruition. So I, I really, you know, sky's the limit. And high school students, if you're out there, yeah, tell stories, be creative, and more than anything, explore. We were in class the other day, and I asked, I brought my guitar to class. I said, I'm going to record live for you, class. I want you to tell me what you like, and then ask yourself, well, what kind of styles can we add to this? And somebody said, you know, well, that's kind of funky, Mr. B., and I said, well, let's take a look at some James Brown music. And then they're like, cool. So by the end of the session, we had made this really cool 30 second spot of a funky commercial music, you know, clip. So yeah, so, you know, bring your passion, bring that creativity. Keith, can I volley that to you to talk about photography and storytelling? Yes, um, I echo what you guys are saying regarding um, an overemphasis on equipment. Um, there aren't very good ways of getting to students uh, other than this venue um, while they're in high school and trying to prepare. Uh, but uh, one of the best things they can do is avoid the um, pressure to uh, gather an inventory of equipment. Now, they will likely gather the wrong equipment and they'll gather it too early. And so um, our departments, uh, collectively have uh, very impressive equipment that is available to students at all levels. And so if a student uh, avoids buying what is affordable, they will find once they discover what governs quality in the digital paradigm, they will likely have the wrong tool. And so uh, th that uh, they need to have a, a sense of collaboration and uh, a critical eye they also need to um, have a willingness uh, towards inquiry. And so if they can start to learn to work together uh, with uh, easy personalities, with difficult personalities, they're going to be way ahead of the game uh, because uh, the technology is easy to learn. I can uh, have students master digital photography in three to four semesters. And uh, imparting upon them what truly governs quality will change their mind about everything they're thinking about right now. And don't get us wrong, the tech is fun, okay? Between Bob, Keith, and I, Latanya, I don't know if you're a gearhead, but 
we're gearheads. We will talk tech till kingdom come. I love buying new tech. It was a lot easier before I got married and had kids, but I love buying new tech. Um, yeah. But I, I always use an example of a drone that I bought back when droning was a big thing, right? When it was brand new and DJ had all their drones. Uh, I went out and I got a drone. Why? Because I wanted a drone. <laughs> so what did I do with this drone? Nothing. I had nothing to do with the drone. I would go out and fly it and my hands would get all sweaty because I was scared to crash it. And to this day, I have never used that drone on a commercial venture um, because I thought I needed it and yet I didn't. Um, and so I kind of use that example to my students. Like, yes, are drones fun? Hands down. Do you need to go spend $2,000 to own one right now? Not unless you have a client who's paying you consistently to use it. So anyway, I don't want to downplay tech because <laughs> we all enjoy it, but uh, it is something to juggle between skill and storytelling capabilities yeah. and what tech you're using when you need it. Yes. So if students are wondering about technology and mm -hmm. what they should do to prepare, they should ask themselves this question. Can I answer what the five uh, most salient elements that control quality in my discipline are? If they can't answer those five questions at the top, they shouldn't be buying equipment. And what's nice about these programs is that they don't have to. Well, that's perfect. It leads right into our next question, actually. <laughs> um, so I know we've mentioned there's a lot of technology that's needed um, in this industry. So for your courses that you all teach, what new skills or techniques, um, as you just mentioned, Keith, <laughs> um, do you teach students to kind of prepare them for those real world careers so that way they go out there they're ready they know all the tech they know all the equipment what what do, what all do you do the first thing they're going to learn uh, uh hopefully as early as possible is that traditional chemistry-based film died in 2004 and that was the year the raw file format was uh developed so um i know it's chic to be a quote-unquote hybrid photographer but film and chemistry means low quality in the digital age. And so students are really learning about the uh, distinctions between full frame chip uh, cameras, uh, the large uh, film size creating quality data uh, that is giving way to mirrorless technology cameras that do not have a chamber that holds a mirror that has to get out of the way. That real estate in the camera is expensive, both in weight and price. And so uh, mirrorless uh, gives us all kinds of technological uh, advantages. Simultaneously to the development of mirrorless technology is computational photography. Uh, that's why in some situations, uh, smartphones uh, can be uh, a, a valid tool. Uh, the problem with smartphones in professional photography has to do with lighting. That does nothing for uh, their understanding of lighting. And so, um, they need to understand that we are always in flux and we have a simultaneous development of mirrorless technology and computational photography, whereby you can use a camera to make decisions about how you want your photograph to look, or you can use software to do so. Um, they need to be uh, versed in both. I'm gonna say this quickly because I wanna lobby it to LaTanya because yeah. <laughs> I think LaTanya, you're gonna be able to speak better to this than I am. In terms of a new or specific skill, team learning. And it is one of the things that I think most students, and myself included when I was in college, I loathe team projects, especially with other creatives because the creative ego is a weird thing. Um, and so team projects, team learning, it's painful, but it is the number one thing that our employers that we work with want our students to have LaTanya take it away. Oh, most definitely. Thank you so much for that segue, Alan. And that's why even with social media marketing and, and our programs that um, we teach here at MSJC, I do a lot of team projects because I always tell everyone, everyone brings something special to the table. And when you're able to bring what you bring, your strengths, then you can make your project even better for your employer. And so what we see now, everyone, 
Um, when it comes to, uh, you know what, dig digital media, social media marketing, you all, um, people are looking for you. And when you allow yourselves to learn the things that you need to learn and come together as a team, you learn so much more. And just like Alan said, you're giving your employer exactly what it is that they need and what they want. Because sometimes they don't necessarily know what they need. But when you come together and bring your expertise and you learn how to work with other people, team members, you are much better for it and you bring so much more value to the table. So honestly, when you come to advanced social media marketing, which I know many of you um, will do, um, you high school students, you're going to learn a lot of teamwork um, and you are going to be the better for it. Yeah. That was awesome. Bob? Sure. Yeah. You know, the uh, team. So a quick anecdote. So last week, again, I go back to this massive global, you know, live stream production that I was part of at UC Riverside. And there was a team of five of us. And we all had this interplay between knowledge and skill sets to tackle many different types of problems from ethernet connections to are we going to stream 4k are we going to be able to you know have 4k run without any delay do we have enough power are we going to go down do we have battery backups for this are we going to go you know are we going to be plugged in we had to sit and think as a team to make sure that whatever was going to go live was going to go smooth because we're not just the tech team, we also support the performance that people are gonna see. So this is, you know, and I'm coming from a performative side uh, of technology where it's not, it's, we have to use these tools in real time, like in broadcasting, right? But, you know, high school students out there, I wanna tell you this about team building and also one thing that I find critical when you're in the classroom is that, you know, being, you know, getting a pretty good, uh, you know, knowledge on how your computer integrates with your gear is very important. And that's something that I find to be critical when, you know, first year students come in, how much that you actually learning computer science to some tech, some extent in audio technology, like, wow, I don't know that the computer and the software and what we're manipulating, they're all going to do this together. So I found that when I was learning audio tech, you know, early, early on, I felt like I became a computer scientist. So it opened up this doorway of, of interest, everyone. So again, when you're taking these, you know, these courses and you're working with gear and you're working with computers, you're working with a lot of integrated parts that become a whole. And that whole actually, again, leads to that team development, right? Because everybody now can speak a language based upon technology. And what is the product? Is what we did last week was to live stream a wonderful dance performance. That's awesome. Um, so I do want to ask, we're going to go right over to question six, um, but uh, if you can sum it up, that we would get to the last one. Um, for your students or your courses, you know, the students that are in your department, do you encourage them to find, um, you know, different opportunities that can help them gain the experience um, so whether it's like shadowing each of you all with your personal um, companies, or if you can help them find an apprenticeship program or a mentor that could guide them. Um, if not, then do you have any suggestions on how students can get that experience? I, I actually hire digital media specialists. Um, I have one now, and I did tell some of my students, I am more than willing for them to shadow them. Because, you know what, you always need to put your hands on, you know, I, I believe in on hands on experience. And the only way you're going to learn is by being active. I always teach the students, even though we lecture and we teach and we give you all the information, I believe that you really, really learn even more and are able to absorb by doing. And so I do believe in shadowing. And so, um, yes, I am big on that. And I'm always looking for other people that are looking for digital media or right, social media marketing specialists, they come to me all the time. And so um, we're just ready to put them out there and um, just getting them ready now because people are in search of, um, of marketers 
of di social media marketers and digital media specialists as well. So yes. That's true, that's true. And Keith and Bob, if I can speak for <clears throat> our three programs, if I may, um, we, we work with local entities, whether it be companies looking to hire or other industry partners um, that have opportunities for our students to either do shadowing or to get hired right off the bat. Um, I know Keith and Bob, you guys both have industry folks that you know, um, including people that are even hired in our department. Um, Keith's instructional aide is a full-time event photographer who's very well-skilled. Um, and Keith, I don't know if you want to talk about Melissa being able to, to work with students on that, but we, we, we have great opportunities for students to get plugged in with potential job opportunities should they desire. That's true. And the distinction that I want to make is that uh, in the digital photography program, it's important to understand when that should occur. And that occurs at the advanced level. So you can think of uh, three courses, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Uh, that placement can happen uh, with the most mature students who understand that it's a symbiosis and you're working with a professional who's maintaining a reputation. You have to bring something to the table and you have to know how to uh, work amiably with a clientele. So uh, at the advanced level, that works out really well. And Melissa is a great resource for that and many other uh, photographers too. And we call that second shooting in uh, digital photography. And so if you can find a second shooting uh, opportunity, I highly recommend it. Do it for no more than say a year to two years. As long as you're learning something, don't become uh, a, uh, um, uh, a simple tool for somebody else's profit. Uh, you want to gather the skills you can and the knowledge you can, and then move on and start your own entrepreneurial venture. That's awesome. We're actually going to jump over to our last question. Um, but Alan, I have a special question for you that came in that you can kind of combine with your final advice. Um, one student added, um, earlier you mentioned that the creative ego is a weird thing. So we definitely all relate to it because it's like our baby we want to create and make perfect. Um, what are some ways that the high school students can work personally to overcome that creative ego and then prepare themselves to work in the team? So the creative ego, I think of it kind of like the Hulk, you know, that scene where he's yeah. like, like, how do you, how do you get angry? Like, that's, that's the key. I'm always angry, right? It's like with the creative ego, we can't pretend that we ever conquer the creative ego. We all have it. And that's what allows us to make something and put it on the internet and say, here world, look what I made. It's a, that's a frightening thing. And yet it takes a certain amount of ego, positive ego to do that. The issue is ego can start to really make you butt heads with other creatives because everyone has their own passionate ideas as to how things should go. Um, which is why team-based productions, at least in my video two course, are always one click shy of a, uh, you know, MTV real world um, drama going on. It's, just, it's, it's kind of funny to watch because everyone cares so much. And so when we talk about advice for students who are interested in this field, I wouldn't say look to conquer your ego, but look to recognize that you don't know how to do everything, that you're always learning, and that there are some people that do things a lot better than you. And that's hard. Those three things are really hard for anyone's creative ego to admit um, because we wanna be the masters of our own area. Um, and as instructors, I'll speak for myself. I don't know everything. This industry is constantly changing. How could we know everything? Adobe just did their brand new updates with a whole bunch of features I haven't even delved into yet. So you're on the same ground level as I am on, on those new Photoshop neural filters and all those cool Premiere timeline techniques. So we're constantly learning. We're constantly admitting we don't know things, even in class. Mm -hmm. And I tell you the amount of times students raise their hand and they say, couldn't you just, and I'm like, well, yes, you could. And clearly I've known that for years. <laughs> the amount of time students teach us things is astronomical. Um, so recognize what you're good at. But as you come into our courses, recognize that you don't know everything and that you have an awesome team of people who are here to help you craft that ego into something that's going to get you hired and make money doing what you love. 
Um, I think the biggest lie is that there's no merit in working full-time in the creative industry when everything you see, touch, watch, and listen to has been touched by some kind of creative. Um, it drives me nuts. And parents, if you're a parent out there, <laughs> encourage your children to do creative media. It's the way of life. It's the way that our, our, our technology is going to interface with our society and learning it now is going to make you a better human for it. So Thank that's you, my high Alan. horse. I get that super passionate. Perfect. <laughs> ego um, ego um, is a luxury that should be used with restraint. Mm -hmm. Perfect. No, that was perfect. Um, Keith, I'm actually going to go right into you with our final question because Alan gave his advice. Um, so if you have any advice that you could share with students who are interested in this field, they want to go into creative media, but they just don't know where to start. What can you tell them? Well, the first thing they need to do to start is enroll in Photo 125 and uh, Dig uh, 110. Those are the beginning classes in each of uh, digital photography. Uh, if they're looking uh, to uh, focus on photography or uh, digital video. There are other beginning classes that you can take uh, for additional disciplines, uh, but uh, those two really facilitate uh, a great many uh, paths that you can go through uh, both, uh, in, well, throughout creative media. Um, so once you've gotten yourself in the right course, uh, Photo 125, uh, Dig uh, 110, um, you need to take advantage of this incredible facility. Um, you need to uh, plan to use our equipment, uh, take advantage of the studio time that you will have the, uh, as you climb the ladder through expertise in the um, more advanced uh, courses. And uh, it's an unbelievable resource uh, for uh, really uh, the deal of the century in education when it comes to cost. Thank you, Keith. And for Ms. Latanya, for the students that I know have social media <laughs> um, and they're interested in building their platform and their resume into the social media um, sector, what is your advice for them to kind of remain professional? I would say always monitor what is happening in the streets. My students know that is the term I use. So monitor the trends and pay attention because I already know all of you guys here wake up in the morning scrolling on these social media platforms. And so why not take it to the next level? And so stay professional because one thing that we do know, um, social media platforms have a history. So if you're looking to get into this thing, make sure you stay professional, um, you know, stay away from things that you do not want everyone to see. Um, and, um, you know, people are always watching. It's all about visibility. It's all about creating the content that it's needed, especially if you're going into, you know, working for an employer or becoming a freelancer. Pay close attention to the trends. As you all see, Facebook is no longer called Facebook. It is now called Meta. It's always something changing. And so um, just, just do those things and uh, come on into MSJC, into our creative media courses. You'll be glad you did. Thank you, Ms. LaTanya. And Bob, if you can give any final words of advice that would encourage students to kind of find their spark in creativity. Sure. Again, I'm going to reference the fact that I was a skateboarding, guitar playing kid. And you know what? There's a lot of you right now that are just like me. I am you and you are me. And the goal is to come together to create. And that's the beauty of what MSJC has, as Keith was saying. And, and just to paraphrase everyone, is that we have an amazing amount of tools for you to use, to explore, to share, and to believe, and to believe in the creativity that is within you. You know, I, I didn't know that I, I could, you know, I had access to these things when I was a kid. And if you're here watching today with your parents, know that you do. You have access to this equipment at this wonderful college that is situated close to you that's ready. It's ready for you to use to explore your talents and your creativity. And to remember that when you come together, you come together with others. And the idea of us is very important. So if you feel intrepid or nervous, so to speak, that, you know, I don't know, I'm just, I really like music or I really like video or, 
you know, I like to draw, you know, this technology stuff seems kind of overwhelming. Well, guess what? I was super overwhelmed. And through a process of learning and, 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 and listening and partnering with people, I sit before you as that guitar playing skater kid who is, you know, excited to see you every year in the classroom. So we look forward to your success. Well, students, that's your cue to register to MSJC. Um, I hope you all truly enjoyed yourselves. I know that I did, and especially hearing from these amazing representatives. If you have not already, be sure to go into the Vitalink app and check out the Mount San Jacinto College Career Education Pathways. This week is creative media, obviously, um, but you'll go in and you'll learn more about their certificates and degrees. Um, play around with some workshops. You actually will learn brief tools, not expert tools. Um, you can see some behind the scenes photos and videos and hear a success story. Also check out the salary if you're truly interested and tune in tomorrow for the industry representatives You'll see some familiar faces and some new ones and learn more about the behind the scenes and how you too can be a part of this industry. Thank you all for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.